As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing. Day program. We're glad that you're with us. We have a wonderful program for you today and we want to encourage you to stay with us. As a matter of fact, this is one of those programs you may want to tell other people about. That's right. We want you to be blessed, so we encourage you to be with us. We're going to pray in a moment, but before that, we want to introduce to you our special guest during this morning, actually part of the family at 3AVN, and we have Brother Charles Bird, Pastor Charles Bird, and his wife Karen. Welcome. Thank you. What a privilege to be with you. Thank you so much for coming. We know that uh, you are very busy, uh, not only in pastoral ministries, but also in the ministry, Thunder in the Holy Land, and other things that we're going to hear also an update about. Give us a little, what would you say, a little glimpse of where we're headed in this program. Well, God has laid on people's hearts, and you interview so many of them here, uh, to be active in ministry. We are in the last days of Earth's history. Mm -hmm. Time is, is, has come now to that moment in history where we are called to be witnesses. And to be a witness for the Lord means that everyone is called. In fact, if we just wait for the pastors, the, the, the evangelists, no, everyone is a minister. We're all called. And if we don't all get on this together, we're going to be a long time here yet. So God's calling us to finish this up. Amen and amen. True. True indeed. So we hope that you will see this as a call from the Lord to be active in some way in helping to finish the work that God has given us to do. The whole world needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Before we continue, we'd like to go to the Lord in prayer and we want you to join us. But before that, I'd like to remind you that you can be a part of the 3ABN ministry by praying for the request that you hear or see on the programming. People are counting on your prayers. So we want you to join us, be part of the family in praying for the request because uh, actually we are blessed, uh, praising the Lord because we have prayer partners in almost every country in the world. Amen. And you could be one of them. It's, uh, you can go to our website and find out how to become a prayer partner and you'll receive some prayer requests sent to your email and not the, uh, not all of the prayer requests that come in because you will be overwhelmed. We'll send you some. Uh, but we encourage you to be a prayer warrior. So at this time, we encourage you to pray with us. Let us pray. Our loving and wonderful Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And we present to you, Lord, the requests that have come in to 3ABN. You know there are many, and you know each and every person, each and every concern, and Heavenly Father, one of the things that really slow your children down is to be worried, worried about how these things will turn out. So we pray that as we come before your throne of grace, you will give your children a calmness and a serenity in knowing that you are in control. And with you, all things are possible. We pray for those that are sick. We pray for those that are concerned about their financial situation. We pray for those that have marriage problems. And we pray also for those that are praying for others to come to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And even for those mothers and fathers that are praying for their children to return to the Lord. We pray for your holy angels and your Holy Spirit 
to do that work which human beings cannot do. But we pray, Heavenly Father, that if in any way we can cooperate with you to reach those that need to hear about you, and if in any way your children can cooperate with you in the healing process, let us know what can be done. And Heavenly Father, we now pray for your blessing upon this program. We ask that it will reach people and help people encourage and also inspire. We ask you, Heavenly Father, for these things in the holy and blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, we would, not, we would like to ask you to join us in a scripture reading, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, I will go ahead and read that for you. And uh, actually, how about Sister Karen? How about if you read that for us? Right. I think a, a nice woman's voice would be really good in here. Or despise or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Mm. Mm. What a marvelous and powerful question. Mm. Um, anything you would like to share about this? Well, when I, uh, early on, when I got married, I came home one day and I told my wife, I don't believe in God anymore. Uh oh. And of course, she's a PK, which means a preacher's kid. She's also an MD. Okay. A minister's daughter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, she was in a little bit of shock there, but I was frustrated in my own personal journey because I wanted to follow God. I wanted to do what was right. I, I tried. And for those who have tried to be good in their own power, mm -hmm. you know how impossible that is. Oh, yes. And um, so I was done trying. And the Lord told me, I want you to go back to Steps to Christ. I said, Lord, I've read that book. It's boring. Uh-oh. And uh, he said, no, study it inductively. Mm. So I picked up the book again. And the first chapter was God's love for man. Well, I know he loves me. He died for me, but that's not helping. Second chapter was a sinner's need of Christ. I know I'm a sinner. That's my problem. The third chapter was repentance. Mm. I was raised in the Adventist church, died in the wool, never darkened the door of a public school system. I had no clue what repentance was. None. And, and I mean none. There was no nail on the wall of my mind. There was no Velcro strip. There was no uh, t uh, sticky tape. There was nothing there. So I took my Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. I went through every text in the Bible on repentance. And when I got done, what I knew was is that repentance is feeling about things the way God does and acting accordingly. Mm. That's what repentance is. And it's a gift that God gives you. It comes from the outside to the inside where He changes your want to. It's a black preacher who wrote a book, you got to have a want to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and He gives you the will and the doing. He does it all. Mm -hmm. Well, once I realized that and I could go to Him and say, Lord, I like this. You told me not to like it. You told me not to have any part of it, but I like it. Would you change my heart? Wow, praise God. And then he started changing my heart. Praise the Lord. I treated my wife better. I treated other people better, not because I had to, but because I wanted to. Mm. And it made a, a, a radical difference in my life. And just this morning, uh, as I was reading this verse again, and I always use this phrase, I was reading it again for the first time. <laughs> because in God's Word, when you, when you are into the Word, it's always new. Yes. His mercies are new every morning. <laughs> and so they're new for us today. And uh, so as I was reading that this morning, I was also reading in Steps to Christ. And I read in Steps to Christ, page 115, the children of God are called to be representatives of Christ, showing forth the goodness and mercy of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it's His goodness that draws us to Him. Mm -hmm. And so He overwhelms us with His goodness if we care to notice it. And that's what draws us to Jesus. And so if we want to be representatives, it isn't just knowing Saturday's a Sabbath or dead people are sleeping in the grave or whatever unique truth that we found in God's Word. It's also the goodness. Wow. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very strong word used there. Do you despise the goodness of God? You know, it's, um, 
is something interesting to consider that somebody is giving you something priceless, mm. yeah. like repentance, and you reject this marvelous gift. Yeah. Sister Karen, do you have anything you would like to share about this? Well, I think that it, all of heaven must just go, what? Hmm. What? Yes. You know, how could you despise it? You, you know, they see and they have seen it all and we see through a glass darkly. And, uh, but once you start looking at God's goodness, it's just all over. Amen. I mean, we have every day just so many things we can be thankful for. And just, I've, I've been overwhelmed many times <laughs> and just seeing how good God is in spite of everything around Amen. us. Amen. His goodness is Amen. so wonderful. Well, I think uh, our friends that are joining us can tell that we can probably spend the rest of the hour talking about <laughs> this verse. However, we can't do that right now because we have some wonderful things to share with you. And we do have a music offering that we'd like to uh, bring before you. And this song has a wonderful title. It's called Shepherd of My Heart by Kendall Backus.
Amen and praise the Lord. Ken Dobakis, we thank you so much for coming to record this beautiful uh, instrumental piece and we encourage uh, you to visit Ken Dobakis. Uh, surely he has a Facebook page and I'm sure he'll be glad to hear from you. Say you heard him on 3ABN. Well, we have with us uh, Pastor Charles Bird and his wife Karen. Both of you work together in ministry, and that's a wonderful thing to see a couple together in ministry. Now, you are the uh, board chairman of how QLP. Questline Productions. Questline Productions. And your wife is the president. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Questline Production. What is that? Well, it's um, we create video Bible study series. We've done two series so far and ramping up for our third series. In Search of the Truth was our first mm -hmm. and then Thunder in the Holy Land. And um, now we're looking towards another one. Well, our viewers and listeners are familiar with uh, Thunder in the Holy Land. Um, I'm not sure when it started. Uh, you could give us dates. I know it's been on the it was, three again for years. I think it was years. the fall of 2013 is when Thunder started being aired. Well, that's a few years ago. <laughs> and so uh, it has taken a change. We, the first series was uh, with uh, Pastor Charles Baird, but then we saw other people in the videos, uh, the, the new version, when, when you say Thunder in the Holy Land. Why that title? Why Thunder in the Holy Land? Well, that's a good question. Um, I wanted to create a new Bible study series with a new theme to it. Uh, many Bible studies are out there from many denominations. Uh, uh, they're all probably somewhat titled My Church Versus Your Church. Now, none of them are really titled that way. Mm -hmm. But we're more interested in our stripe. You know, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Lutheran. You know, I'm a Pentecostal, whatever. And I said to myself, you know, if we claim to be Christians, if we're all Christians, then we ought to at least agree on what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. And if we can't agree on what Jesus said, if he said, love your enemies, and we say, yes, we should love our enemies, except for Muslims, you got to hate them. Well, if that's your mentality, you're not really a Christian because Jesus said, love your enemies. That's right. And, and he said, love everybody. Mm -hmm. so, so you can't start hating a certain class of people because of the color of their skin or because of what country they're from or, or because of their background. So I said, if we can't agree on the teachings of Jesus. So I thought, I'd like to make a series. Every episode is something Jesus taught. So Thunder in the Holy Land, that's what it is. Thus the title, Thunder in the Holy Land, because every time Jesus opened his mouth, it caused a storm of controversy. Mm. Love your enemies. What? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I am the son of God. Stone him. <laughs> every time. Our God is one God. Our God is one God. What? You know, you can't be the son of God. So he caused trouble because he taught the truth. Yes. And so Thunder in the Holy Land. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, well, it's been on 3 even for many years, and our viewers call, our listeners call, and we just praise the Lord because wonderful things have happened. And uh, tell us how this has impacted your life as you've heard from people that have listened or watched the series. Well, it, it has made a bigger impact than just watching us and just watching us on 3 AVN because it was built from the ground up to be a Bible study. And... The power of it is really the impression questions which are on our website. You can just download them, print them off, and use them when you give the Bible study. That's really the miracle sauce of what we're doing because people are engaging with, with, the, with the guests that they're, that they're giving Bible studies to. And, and not only that, but it's not just my Bible study. Mm -hmm. Ministries often have, you know, the star of the show. Well, we built Thunder from the ground up so that local pastors could be inserted and take my place. So the people who are familiar to 3ABN and they've watched Charles Bird doing Thunder in the Holy Land, uh, there are now uh, uh, nearing 100 pastors, laymen, uh, educators, uh, nice. conference leadership, evangelists who've been inserted mm -hmm. as the host. And now it's their series. Uh, Lonnie Malashenko was inserted. Chris Holland, when he was speaker director for It Is Written Canada, was inserted. So many people have taken advantage of this and then used this as Bible studies. And, and uh, it's, it's so rewarding to hear stories of people we've never met, people who don't even know us, who didn't even see us. They maybe saw some other pastor. I'm thinking of Pastor Jason Logan. Yeah, our most recent one. Uh, we heard um, uh, Dick, he was all his life. He knew there was a higher power, but didn't give it much thought. 
and uh, had struggled with alcoholism for quite a long time and had uh, taken advantage of that higher power, not really knowing totally what, what that was, but uh, he finally gained the victory. And then he had a really serious car accident. Mm. Um, and his Seventh-day Adventist um, landlord was helping him kind of learn how to heal his body. And in the process, um, there was a thunder study going on because Jason Logan had been inserted and his members were, you know, having uh, thunder in the Holy Land studies going on. Small group studies. And um, so they got to talking about scripture and she invited Dick to one of those thunder studies and he was just um, so captured by it. And I didn't mention that he was 92. Oh, 92. Wow. <laughs> 92. And he <clears throat> just says, wow, this is truth. And he was just really impressed with it. And the Holy Spirit impressed upon him. He had to be baptized. It was delayed for a while because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Pastor Jason and said, we can't wait any longer. <laughs> Praise the I Lord must get that. baptized. Yes. I'm 92. <laughs> <laughs> Something so, could happen. <laughs> that was the, the beauty of, you know, having a, uh, your church members having these studies going on, ongoing, so you can just plug them in. That's wonderful. Uh, now, some pastors or, or lay people have heard you uh, as this aspect of being inserted in because there's the the part of the program where you have your people on, on, on the site in the Holy Land mm -hmm. doing their presentations. So they all stay constant. Okay. But I, as the host, mm -hmm. so I'm like the evening news anchor. I start it in the middle it and end it, and I hand it off to the reporters live. They stay constant, but the local pastor or the local evangelist or the local Bible worker can be inserted and take my place. <clears throat> so I'm not even seen in the video. And, uh, and the power of that to me is is that then it, it gives the local church members something to share. So I'm out sharing the Bible with somebody and somebody, and I get near the end of the study, I say, would you like to meet the host of this series? And they go, oh, can I? And I say, oh yeah, a personal friend of mine, really, yeah. And the next week I bring my pastor. They already know the pastor because they've been watching him teach the precious truths of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they already know me because I've been loving on him for 26 weeks. <laughs> and I just encourage all of our pastors out there, all of our, our church members out there, take your church and give it a cycle of evangelism. Make it a thunder yes. church to where you're constantly having studies going just all year long and you're constantly reaping people instead of waiting for that one event every five or whatever years, two years, whatever yes. your, your church is doing. Have a cycle of evangelism where anyone who comes to your church can be plugged in to a thunder study. It is powerful. It is winsome. Uh, we had one a couple who came to a Bible study that Pastor Jeff Potts was holding. Pastor Jeff Potts uh, is an evangelist in his own right, was the uh, uh, ministerial director for Mansas Conference. And uh, he, he, he said, this is his own words to me, he says, I'm kind of embarrassed. He says, in over 30 years of ministry, I've never held a Bible study in my own home for my neighbors. But he got inserted into the thunder. People started coming to his studies in his own home started seeing baptisms, empowered church members started. Anyway, one couple came and the one guy said, you know, he said, these are safe to use. Yes. Get me a set so I can share with my friends. Marvelous. So, praise the yeah. Lord. And praise there's the Lord. any number of other young people have been impressed with it. Um, we had one thunder group that um, was happening that young people came to it and they said, if those young people can do that, we should do something. Oh. And they started a, a, a campus ministry in the college in their town. Excellent. Inspired by the young people that were on Thunder. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one inspiring another. Yeah. That's right. That's great. Uh, now, the people are being inserted, the pastors and lay people being inserted, mm -hmm. do they come to where you are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They okay. come to our studio. Okay. Uh, we give them three days. Uh, they only speak for four and a half hours. We give them three days mm -hmm. <laughs> because many of the people who come, they're not media people. Mm -hmm. And because they're not media people, it takes three days. <laughs> but when, when we get done with us, you'd, you'd think they were media people. Mm. And they look good. They, they have a nice presentation and uh, people enjoy their videos. Excellent. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to encourage you to consider being one of the hosts for Thunder in the Holy Land. And we're going to share information uh, in, a, in a moment how you can do that. But we know there's a lot more going on 
there are more projects you're working on. Uh, what is the latest passion or the latest project that you're working on to help further the gospel? I remember when we finished In Search of the Truth, 13 episodes. I was pastoring four churches. We created 13 episodes. People said, what are you going to produce next? I said, nothing. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I mean, I love doing it, but when you're pastoring and then making videos, it just really consumes your time. And so I wasn't interested in doing anything else until I met Pastor Chuck Coley. Appreciate that man, a godly man. He basically created the, the framework of what is Thunder in the Holy Land. He created his own Bible study series. I'm using his method, hook, line, and sinker. I'm just so blessed by what he thought through and, and did. His method and of impression his, question. His method of impression mm -hmm. question. So, so that's what Thunder was based off of, using those impression questions, using that whole method that he was doing, just a different set of, of, of videos. Um, so then people started asking me the same question you did. So what are you going to produce next? No, I'm done, really. Trust me, I'm done. <laughs> really, this time I'm done. Until we've had now 13 languages and counting, and we were just talking to uh, Tony Nobley, who is the vice president of the North American Division in charge of multilingual uh, work. And uh, he just threw in a couple more names. And so now we're 13, 14, 15. And, and he's in, under his portfolio, he's got 13 languages that he works with here in North America. Yes. So, so the languages keep coming and saying, we want something like thunder, but in our language. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling the Lord, I don't think we can do that. Once you raise that much money and then take them all on location and, and shoot it and then edit all that, that is so time consuming, so much money, it can't be done. It just can't be done. So I kept saying no, 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 until about the ninth language. And then one day I was reading my Bible and I'm sitting there reading and the text that pops off the page for the first time again <laughs> says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, yes. And I just stopped right there and I said, Lord, I know it's too hard. I know it's too much money. It's too much time. It's too hard. I know it can't be done. But now I'm reading in your book and you said, ah, is anything too hard for me? Like, hello, mm -hmm. I'm God here. And so I stopped and I began to pray and I said, Lord, forgive me for not seeing things through your eyes. Yes. So if you believe that we can shoot a Bible study series that can then be reshot again and again and again in multiple languages, you're going to have to show me how to do it. Mm. Because... I don't have a clue of how to pull that off. You, you opened the door. I you opened, opened the, the door. door for the Lord to show you. Yes. And that's good. We should do that. We, we should. Say, Lord, how, how, how is this going to be? Show me. Yeah. So, so how, what happened? So the first thing he did, he, he started speaking. As soon as I prayed that, he started talking. And he said, don't take uh, the, the Muhammad to the mountain. Bring the mountain to Muhammad. Now, I was a student missionary in Jordan, so I have a little bit of the, the Mohammedan story in my mind. And, and immediately I interpreted that, do it green screen. Don't take everyone on location. Bring the location to them. Hmm. And I said, okay, Lord, I got that. But still, you've got to hire all these camera operators and you've got to, you've got to pay all these people. And I said, now, if the cameras just knew where to go all by themselves, all by themselves. They would just move and zoom in and zoom out, and rise up and go down and move left and move right. If they just moved all by themselves, <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing, but if they could, you'd save all that money and you could do it cheap enough because you got to get the cost down because if you're going to repeat it over and over and over, you got to get the cost down to where these languages can afford to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Karen and I jumped on a plane. We flew to Las Vegas to the National Association of Broadcasters. And I walked up to a booth and I said, well, I'm looking for some equipment. Well, tell us what you're trying to do. So I told him, I'm trying to create a Bible study series where I can do it factory style, where the cameras all automatically just know where to go and the teleprompter runs and, and points them to the, the, the next camera move and, and all that all by itself. And he just smiled and he said, sounds ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to another booth and I went to another booth and finally I landed at a booth and all the equipment that the Lord had put in my mind 
has been created. Already existed. It already exists. Look at that. It's expensive, but it already exists. And then if you think, well, it's not that expensive if you use it all over day, over all month, all year for language after language after language after language, empowering those languages to have a Bible study in their own language with their own people speaking their own dialect. Yes. Then it's not that expensive. Hmm. So, so now we're, we're in a full, full bore, going ahead mode. We're writing the scripts. They have to be written differently than for just an American audience because it's going to be an international audience. And so we're writing them that way. They're more story formed. They're, they're truth formed versus colloquial local form. Well, Karen, you are involved in this as well. What is the title of this series oh. and where does it go as compared to Thunder in the Holy Land? We, we talked and talked about the, the title and uh, prayed and prayed about it. And one came to, to him and it just seemed too simple. <laughs> but when it all was said and done, it just seemed like that was the right one. Just the simple title of I Met God. I, I Met, Met God. God. Okay. The over, overarching title. And, um, and then it would be done in uh, four 13 episode series, which would turn out to be 52 episodes, which is one for every week of the year. Yes. So um, it's I Met the God of science, I met the God of health, I met the God of prophecy, and I met the God of relationship. And they can be, people can plug in, you know, whichever they think their audience would be most interested in starting out with. You know, I have an audience that's interested in health, so let's start with the health one, you know, mm. so it, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, lockstep in order. I don't even be, know if there is a God. <laughs> Maybe there isn't really a God. I How do I know science. that there even is a God? Well, you can start with, I met the God of science. Hmm. Yeah. Now, after being at three event for a while, I, you kind of get a feel for what people are thinking as far as when they hear things. Now, when you said this, I met the God of science, I met the God of this, and I met the God of that, people are wondering, well, how many gods are you talking about? Are we still talking about the one God, or are you saying there are different gods? <laughs> I met God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Uh, I'm really excited for the folks up at Sermon View. In fact, we have a graphic of this. They have actually done our artwork for our new series. Uh, I met the God of science. I met the God of, of uh, health. I met the God of relationship. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, prophecy, and I met the God of science. And so this artwork, actually, at the center of it is that picture from the Sistine Chapel where God is reaching out and touching man mm -hmm. and that kind of centers it but then you have these different topics along the way. Great, great. Uh, an illustration uh, helps capture the interest as well. Uh, now we also have other pictures. Uh, would you like to talk about those at this time? Uh, no, we'll pick them up as we we'll go. We'll pick them up as we go. Okay. Very good. So this I Met God series um, is, is already in process. What do you need to keep going? Well, uh, we're going to need a number of things. Obviously, we're going to need prayer, but, but people don't recognize if they start praying for something, their heart is in it. Mm -hmm. And so that's really key. But be, before we talk about that, I think it's important to, to uh, help our audience to recognize uh, how this is going to be a unique series. Okay. Because it, instead of it just being... Uh, a talking head, it's going to look very much like thunder. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a host in the studio, and then they're going to hand it off to reporters uh, literally around the world. Mm, so great. when we're talking about the God of science, for example, one of the illustrations we're going to use that there has to be a God yes. is DNA. Oh. Well, DNA, it's it's you know, many, 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 many sets of encyclopedias of all the information that's encoded in your DNA. In other words, it's a language. How do you create a language randomly? <clears throat> so even if you took 27 letters of the alphabet and you just put them in a Scrabble box and shook them up and dumped them out, you wouldn't get any meaningful sentence. You probably wouldn't even get a meaningful word, but you wouldn't get a meaningful sentence. And so 
DNA is sentence after sentence after sentence, book after book, set after set. And so we're actually shooting that portion of it in front of the uh, institute in France where a, a camera, a human camera, took the first picture of a DNA strand. I can't imagine what kind of a lens <laughs> has to be on a camera that can actually take a picture of a DNA strand. So it's going to literally be all over the world. Every episode, whether you're talking about science or whether you're talking about health, uh, you know, whatever you're talking about, we're going to have anchor points literally all around the world. So this series will have a true international fragrance so that when the Chinese are doing this series, one of the portions will be there in front of the terracotta soldiers in China. But then they'll also be in Baghdad. And they'll also be on the steps, you know, of, of Tibet, you know, or whatever. So they'll, these Chinese people will be all over the world. And when the Malawian people do it, they literally will be all over the world. And when the, when the Hmong people do it, they'll literally be all over the world doing these uh, different. Excellent. Now, this, this sounds like a series that people will say, I have to, I have to watch this one. Yes. I have to watch this one. We've had some people, is it ready? Is it ready? <laughs> <laughs> Like, now, no, we're still fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's coming. It's yes. coming. Now, I understand uh, that the Grants Pass Seventh-day Adventist Church has, um, has been inspired. How did God inspire them to embrace this project? Well, we have uh, one of our members. This was like during COVID, wasn't it? Yeah. It was just over, during COVID. Uh, he was just saying, he kept saying to my husband, we, we really, our church really should have a, a world mission project. Mm. We should, you know, there's so many promises um, that we have from the Spirit of Prophecy about how it blesses a church when they get personally involved with a, a world mission project. So they, my husband said. So Bob comes to me and he says, we really ought to do this. Now, I'm a pastor. And when somebody comes to me and says, this is what we ought to do, that means the Lord put the burden on them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I, my name is Bird, and so I always put wind under their wings. <laughs> and I said, well, make up a proposal. Let's take it to the board. I'll support you. And so he did nothing for about a month. And he comes to me and he says, Pastor, we really ought to do something on missions. And I said, make up the plan. I'll support you. <laughs> Gather a team. <laughs> Gather a team. Put a plan together. So he came to me a third time. <laughs> And, and finally, he did it. He was really shy. He didn't want to be up front. He didn't want to push the church to do something. He wanted me to push the church to do something. But that God called him to do it. And, and I agreed with him. I think the church should do it. So they picked. And this is what's amazing. Right during COVID, that's when churches are shutting down. People can't come. How do you pay your tithes and offerings when you can't come to church? And, uh, and the first month... Uh, when that happened in our church, uh, we sent the conference like uh, only 40% of what they usually get from our church in tithes. <laughs> only 40%. They called up, hey, what's going on down there? Well, you shut our church down. How about that? You know? <laughs> so to start a mission project where you're raising money for other stuff, that's kind of like not a smart move, right? Wrong. That's n when is the time to stop moving forward in faith? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, there's never, there's a time. never a time. There's never a time. You know, the walls of Jericho are steep. Move forward, you know. The Jordan River is in flood stage. Move forward. The Red Sea's in the way. Move forward. God doesn't want us to stop. In fact, that's a, a statement that has guided me. God cannot guide a stationary object. Mm. If you stop moving, he can't guide you. So we started doing this. We, we, we raised money for God Pods. For Papua New Guinea. That was one of the projects. We raised money to build a school in India. Marvelous. And the church says, we want to support the I Met God project. Mm. Knowing that it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for the equipment and, and getting this all together, we probably can't do all that, but we can support it. We can support it with our prayers. We can support it financially as, as we can. And with volunteers. With volunteers, we can, we can do something. So right in the middle of COVID, and we've been at this, what, nine months now? Mm -hmm. uh, eight, nine months. They wanted to raise $6,000 for God Pods. They raised over 10. Praise the Lord. They wanted to raise $10,000 for India. They raised over 12. 
Praise God. And then they didn't even pick a figure for I Met God, and they've raised close to 20000 Praise the Lord, yes. And in October, this is the time when you're falling behind in church budget, see? I mean, you're kind of at the end of the year, and you're kind of falling behind. You hope you make it up in December. We're $3,000 ahead. Mm, of our yearly Lord. budget. Yes. So the, it was just, it was so awesome to see what happens when... The Lord is moving. Yeah, the Lord is when, moving. when you, when you uh, have a heart for, for the people of the world uh, that haven't heard about Jesus yet. Yes. And the Spirit of Prophecy says, if you have an eye to mission, the funds at home will take care of themselves. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So I would encourage, you said, what could, what could our listeners do? I would encourage perhaps a hundred churches out there or 200 or a thousand churches out there say, let's make the I Met God project one of our mission projects for the world because not only will it supply Bible study material for the languages who are asking for it, can we have a Bible study like thunder? We want to share Jesus with our, with our community. We want to share the, the three angels message with our community, but we need a tool in our own language like you have. We want a quality with one. People that look like us and people yes. that dress like us and graphics that are relevant to our culture. Absolutely. Yeah. Can, we, can you help us with that? And so, yes, we can. And if churches said, let's make that a mission project, a foreign mission project and support the I Met God project, if we had two or three hundred churches saying, we're going to do that, we're going to make this a mission project. It's COVID, I know, but we're going to have a mission project. They would see, I think, the same results we've seen in our church. Praise the Lord. This is a massive project, mm -hmm. but with God, all things are possible. And so we want to uh, encourage you that are listening, and you may be listening because God has called you to be a part of this Thunder project, the I Met God project. And this is a, a, a great plan. Is there a place they can go on the internet to find out more information, uh, where the project is? We're going to be sharing uh, information, contact information, because people want to know, how's it going? Are you done yet? <laughs> yes. QLP.TV. QLP.TV. Mm -hmm. QLP stands for Questline Productions, or you can say, quick, let's pray. <laughs> Very good. QLP.TV and also Charles Facebook. And we have a Questline Productions Facebook page, which we're active. In fact, if you go to our Quest, go to the Facebook page, go to Questline Productions, you'll see me today standing in front of three of you and saying, we're going in <laughs> to, 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 to uh, record this program. And so we try to keep people current of what we're doing, how we're moving forward. Praise the Lord. This is marvelous. And um, I'm glad to hear it, that your, um, your plan is also to do other languages. Yeah. Yes. Because um, people need the Lord in every single language. And it says, well, we, you know, we think of the scripture that says uh, in Revelation chapter 14, to every tribe, people, and tongue and nation. Tongue and, tongue and nation. So it, it's, it's something marvelous that you're doing. And I uh, encourage people to pray. What, what, how do you see prayer as part of this project? Well, I was, before you asked that question, I was, I was thinking, if you've been in a foreign country, surrounded with a language that you're not familiar with, even if you kind of can get to where you can kind of make it, just imagine uh, trying to get to know God through that foreign language. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just how beautiful it would be if these people could hear with their own people sharing the gospel in their own accent, you know, yes. not even a foreign accent. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, to me, it's just overwhelming when I think the difference. I, I know that some people I've talked with, if they, they know English, but it's not their mother tongue. And so when they read the Bible, they like to go back to their, their mother tongue. And then it really, they really understand it. And let me, let me give you uh, the perspective from, from the Spanish and the Russian. Uh, when 3ABN um, was uh, privileged with the opportunity to go into Russia, yeah. we were bringing people to translate our programming into Russian. And they came and spent some time here. And these were the things we were putting on the air. Eventually, when our studio was done in Nizhny Novgorod, uh, Russia, um, they began to produce 
programs in Russian. So the difference between the response of people responding, we have a book for you, we have a Bible for you, uh, that you can, it, it was like, okay, we, had, we, uh, we, we received this many uh, calls and letters, but when it was in their own language, you know, I mean, they could see the person speaking, mm -hmm. not a translation. Yeah. It went higher and higher, and it was like uh, uh, amazing, amazing. The same thing I could tell you about the net series. There was net 95, Spanish translation, net 96, Spanish translation. And the people were watching Mark Finley preaching and then there was a Spanish translation. But uh, I can tell you there were many baptisms, net 95, net 96, net 98, etc. But when we had a Spanish uh, net speaker uh, do a, a net series, there was a more churches that joined and more baptism. So the concept of people hearing the gospel in their own language right. by a native speaker uh, and seeing the person, I can tell you from experience, it works. Uh, not that the other does not work. It does work, but it, it, it impacts people better, more. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the burden I think the Lord laid on my heart when these languages kept coming to me. Uh, can imagine us doing these 52 episodes in Russian. Now the Russians can have it spoken in their own language. Yes. Uh, the Spanish can have it spoken in their own language. Indian dialects in their language. The 1040 window. Yes. All these languages having their own Bible study in their own language with their own people. Yes. Um, so you, you asked, what can, you know, what about prayer? How will the prayer yes. fit in here? And if, what, what you can really be praying for is that God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills, <laughs> who we know he can provide for this um, and for the funding that it'll take to, to um, do the initial uh, setup and, and then set it up as a factory, so to speak, to be able to do these languages. So we just need, we need resources of financial resources. We need, um, uh, human resources, people resources, uh, just... You know, there are some people that like to hear a number. <laughs> uh, how much do you need? And some people don't, they, they don't uh, have that type of interest. Uh, you know, we tell people, let the Lord impress you how much you want to give because the need is there. Uh, now, do you have a, let's say, let us say phase one or phase two, uh, number that you could say, well, we need this much to complete this particular phase. Do you have sure. something like a crowd, that? A crowdsourcing number. A crowdsourcing <laughs> number, yeah. So the equipment, the highly technical equipment, which will allow us to factoryize this process so that we can do it quickly and efficiently, is about $950,000. Mm -hmm. That's the equipment. Okay. There's yeah, other ex we've gotten some of it with the donations that have come. But. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me give you some numbers this way. I've got a picture of a little boy uh, that I'd like to put up on the screen right now. It's a little boy in Africa. That little boy in Africa is hungry. He's very hungry. So if I asked you for a loaf of bread to feed this child, would you deny me? So that's hard. very hard to deny that. It's very hard. So, so I'm going to ask the question this way. If I asked you for three loaves of Killer Dave's bread, and for those of you who, who, who are American audiences, who've gone to American grocery stores, there's a brand called Killer Dave's Bread. It's a guy who was in prison, <laughs> and maybe he was a killer, but he got working in the bakery, and he started making this really good bread. With lots got, of sticks and twigs in it. <laughs> lots of sticks and twigs, as my friends say. It's, it's a healthy bread, right? Uh, so that bread is like $5 a loaf. Wow. If just 200,000 listeners says, I'll send you three loaves of bread, I'll send you 15 bucks. They can do it at our website, qlp.tv, the donations page. They could do it on Facebook, either way. If 200,000 just sent $15, that's not going to be a stretch for anybody. Or if 100,000 said, I'll give you six loaves of bread. So uh, if, if people just said, I'm going to pray and say, Lord, if I'm going to give 50, 300. If 10,000 people gave $300, we could pay for all the equipment and get the first five languages out the door. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So think of it as not a big sacrifice that you have to do. Well, um, you've heard some good information, and we're going to share with you contact information so that you can get more information. And we want you to uh, visit 
and write down and pray for this project. After this, we are going to have our 3 event news break, and we'll be back in a moment. For more information about Questline Productions, you may go to their website at qlp.tv. That's qlp.tv. Their email address is info at qlp.tv. Their phone numbers are 844-777-5788 or 541-415-6879. Their mailing address is 367 Bulkmer Way, Williams, Oregon, 97544. That's 367 Bulkmer Way, Williams, Oregon, 97544. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Pastor Charles Bird, any final message for our viewers and listeners? Yeah, I, I would just like to appeal to them to come alongside. We are trying to do something that is so much bigger than we are. We, we can't get there from here by ourselves. But if we all pull together, if we're willing to share a loaf of bread or three or six or 10 or 20, uh, we can get this done really easy and it doesn't have to take a lot of work. You know, when, when you have 13 plus languages calling you and saying, please, can we have it in Arabic? Can we have it in Hebrew? Can we do it? They're waiting. They're waiting for an experience with God. And I met God. We've been to Thailand. We've, I've lived in Jordan. We've been to Tonga. And these people are saying, I want an experience with God. I'm waiting. And then the people there are saying to me, give us a Bible study like, like you have in Thunder. Give us I Met God. Give us that experience. We want to meet God too. Help us help them. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Sister Karen, what is your hope uh, for people as they watch and listen? I met God. My hope is that God will touch their hearts and tell them how he wants them to engage. Because my real hope is seeing all these people of the, of the world and mm. the different languages experience. God has people everywhere mm -hmm. that they don't even know they're God's yet. <laughs> they don't know that they're God's people. I want them to experience God. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Charles Bird, Karen Bird. Uh, thank you for being with us and thank you for being with us at home uh, or wherever you are. Remember, God loves you and pray for this marvelous project. God bless you. <laughs>